Okay, today what uh, I wanted to look at was uh, sort of a simple way to connect uh, PHP to uh, S3 object storage. So uh, I made uh, a very simplistic uh, sample site. Uh, the sample site allows us to go through and upload files to a local hosted uh, MinIO uh, system. And this site, uh, I'll put a link uh, in the blog post uh, to everything, but it basically has a Docker Compose, which will bring up the site. And then in the Docker file, it'll install the necessary um, S3 uh, PHP uh, SDK, which is provided by uh, AWS, um, but can be used with uh, any object storage uh, of your choice. And so what the Docker file does is it basically goes through and sets everything up for the connection to be made. Um, the connect then uh, all the connecting details is placed in the header file. So there's a header file and then you people can manually set this. Um, this is an internal uh, secret key, so I'm not worried about it uh, being uh, displayed uh, anywhere. The uh, this can then be like set uh, so you can create everything you want. So um, you can also change uh, what the bucket name is, and then you also need to tell it where the host address goes to. Uh, so walking through this, just functionality-wise, is you can basically go through, browse, uh, say we're going to upload a screenshot, uh, submit, and then the PHP on the back end uh, talks to the submit file.php and then uploads the screenshot and we click back and then we can see that that uh, screenshot was just updated. Uh, clicking the link will prompt for download. Um, if it's uh, a screenshot, or if it's a JPEG, if it's a PDF, uh, it will load the PDF in the browser just like a uh, normal link. Depends on what the default behavior of the browser is. And then we can also uh, delete this from the object with a little warning message, which says, are you sure you want to delete? Say, okay. Then we'll go through and delete. So, and we can see all this sort of happening in real time um, with the, the uploads uh, here. So that rain01 file uh, got deleted. Um, and the rain here uh, is also deleted. So this is one-to-one -one, uh, what's actually happening. Um, MinIO. Uh, has a really handy login, which is a lot more fancy and a lot more feature rich than what I created. There's extra space there. Um, so, but in MinIO, if you uh, have the login credentials, obviously you can go through and connect to all of this and uh, have everything have everything uh, working. Um, so. This is in some ways superfluous, like it's extra, you don't really need it. But uh, there could be lots of cases where maybe you're connecting to remote hosted object storage, or maybe you're connecting to um, a specific bucket, but you don't want to allow like full access to anyone uh, with an internet browser to then access uh, everything that you have uh, in your object store. Um, so uh, if you were to install everything, uh, just getting started, uh, what you would need to do is, uh, in the buckets, uh, create another bucket. We can maybe call this uploads2. Um, once we have uploads2 created, we can go through. Uh, we'll make it a public bucket just to make the permissions a bit easier. Say set. Okay. And then uh, if we wanted to redirect uh, this website, uh, over there, we can just this website uh, to the buckets two. We can just change the parameter in the header to uploads two. Uh, reset. Okay, so nothing's listed because we're in a different bucket, but we can start populating this. So we can uh, we'll put in say like a screenshot file, submit. Then it was successfully been uploaded to uploads two. And then we can see we have the screenshot, and then we can go and we can download it if we wanted to. And then view it in the folder, and there 
need is the screenshot. So it's all working. So just a quick tutorial. Um, actually, let me just uh, quickly go through what's needed in the Docker file. When you're doing the Docker file, uh, what this does uh, on creation is uh, you have to install the update with a composer. Uh, and I had some experience with Composer based on the uh, MongoDB PHP integration uh, that we did in previous videos. So basically, you can just um, sort of, based on that uh, Docker file, uh, you can just sort of uh, tweak it so that instead of requiring all the MongoDB dependencies, um, you can uh, just require the uh, AWS uh, SDK. So uh, that's all pretty straightforward. And then uh, one of the things that I wanted to do, because uh, by default, PHP has a maximum upload size of just two megabytes, which is really small if you're transferring like files or PDFs or images. So uh, this uh, copy command and then this uh, Linux SED, which was a nice little find um, I found last week. Uh, this is a command that runs inside the container and then changes the maximum uh, upload file size from two megabytes to 20 megabytes, and then uh, increases the post size because we use the post command uh, in the PHP to actually push the files to the S3 object store um, server. Uh, also puts the post size, uh, max size in line with the upload file size. And then all this gets applied to the PHP, and then this php.ini file uh, ends up becoming the default uh, configuration for how PHP should work on the PHP server. So all of this will get done automatically once you do the Docker Compose up, and then uh, you're able to upload with uh, a max file size of 20 megabytes. If you wanted to increase the size, um, you can just uh, leverage the Docker file from my GitHub, and then you can you could. Uh, in theory, like make this 200 megabytes. But again, be cautious about making it too large because if people start trying, uh, uploading uh, very large files, there there could be a very long wait or the uh, the feeling of like hang or something. Um, uh, everything that I've done is tested locally. In theory, uh, if you adjust these parameters, uh, just right here in the header at the bottom of the header.php file, you could actually point this at pretty much uh, any endpoint that you wanted. Um, this is connecting uh, to the min.io, but uh, you notice there's no IP address or anything. This, this min.io is, uh, the container knows what min.io is because they're on the same network. This is happens by default when you uh, run Docker Compose. But um, in theory, if you had like a third party, say you're using uh, AWS, you're using uh, Google uh, Cloud Storage, you're using, um, Maybe you're using something like Backblaze, uh, or you have like an already existing uh, min.io uh, object store set up somewhere else. Uh, you could change this and then uh, sort of get up and running with a very basic rudimentary um, uh, website. And again, the advantage here is not to replace whatever uh, browser tools that you already have, but just something where you could have um, a more sort of locked down browser for certain users where uh, it's very easy to start and run. It's very uh, easy to point it at a very specific bucket so that the, the average user wouldn't be able to see uh, what the bucket uh, is. Um, again, because everything's PHP, you actually wouldn't see the PHP val values um, from the website itself because PHP is running on the server. So could be just a useful reference um, and it was uh, just a little project I did to sort of understand how to better use uh, S3 object storage uh, with a web application. So I uh, hope it helps. I uh, hope it's informative. And thank you very much.